guys, this is my first ever hobby grade RC car. I got it when I was 10 years old. I've done various kind of modifications and stuff to it. I raced it, I bashed it, and this is really what got me into the hobby. Do you want to get rich quick? Then buy a lottery ticket and hope for the best. If you want to get rich for sure, you have to provide either a product or service of value. I've spent the past 10 years of my life trying many different ways of making money online. And by far, the quickest and easiest way that I have found is by selling on eBay. I make over $100,000 every single year by selling simple items like this. And I've helped hundreds of people make thousands of dollars every single month. So if you want more money so you can buy more toys, buy a nice house, or quit that dreaded nine till five, then click the link down below and I'll show you how. So it started out life as a Tamiya Manta Ray. Now this is the re-release kit, but it's pretty much identical. So I've done a few, well, if you can call it modifications to this. I mean, I was like 10 years old. So if you look at some of the modifications, there's pieces of Meccano on there. There's kind of all sorts on there. And if you look at the drive shafts, I was so poor. I couldn't even afford spare parts, so I used to have to try and sort of fix it up and just make do with what I had. So these bodies are actually still available today, and if you look on eBay, uh, I can't remember what they're called, but I do believe they are still on there. So this is part two to the original video. I did a little like, kind of rebuild video about this car before, about a year ago now, and you guys keep saying, Kev, when are you going to get it alive? So in this video... I'm gonna try and make this thing alive again. Now in the last video, people said, Kev, a lot of the parts have got cracks in there, you gotta fix it all up, but I wanna keep it as original as I possibly can. This is gonna be like my nostalgia car. I wanna keep as many of the original parts on there how I had it when I was a kid. So yes, there are a lot of parts that are broken, a lot of parts that are worn out, but if I was to replace them all, then there wouldn't really be anything left off the original car, and it would kind of turn out probably more like this. And I've already got a brand new one. The main goal really is, is just to get it working. If I can get this thing to drive with as many of the original parts on it as possible. I mean, let's check out this cowboy we here. Look, we've got a wood screw. We've got, oh my God, I don't know what's going on here, guys. Look at this. This is all loose. I think these shock towers were off of like a top force or something. Uh, I mean, this thing has definitely seen better days. There's pieces missing here. I mean, the thing's really had it, but I mean, it's nostalgia to me, and it would just be nice to get the thing going again. So I do still have the original mechanical speed controller kicking around somewhere at home, but I can't find it. And I've also got the original Acoms Techni Plus that this car came with back in the day. I bought this car from Models in Motion. This used to be my favorite shop when I was a little kid. For now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an electronic speed controller in it and I'm gonna be using this Spectrum radio here. Um, Ian uh, from Claire's RC's channel kindly donated me the parts that I needed to get the drive to work again. So in this video, I'm just gonna do a little bit of wrenching and just see if I can get this car driving. And then there will be a part three to this video when I can find with a mechanical speed controller and all the original Techni Plus radio with the big aerial, it's kind of like a stick radio. But for now, less procrastination, less waffling, and more wrenching. Oh, subscribe. And if you like these videos, give us a thumbs up or give us a thumbs down if you suck because it all helps. So this here is the original screwdriver that I first built this car with all those years ago. I remember I pinched it out of my dad's toolbox and I still have it. <laughs> So, I suppose for nostalgia's sake, I will be doing all the wrenching with this today. Oh my god, check out these drive shafts, guys. Completely worn out. I've got another one here, maybe this one's slightly better condition. <laughs> We've got sellotape bound here to make up for the plastic bit that's missing. But, this is how I ran it when I was a kid, and this is how I'm going to run it now. All oh, right, so that's our four-wheel drive system back up and running. So now, let's put in some electronics. So I'm gonna mount the speed controller up here. I'm not gonna stick it down too tight because it will come out again. It's only temporary. I'm gonna to have to solder these onto the motor. The receiver can go in here like this. Then we have steering, channel one, and throttle, channel two. Ha <laughs> ha! 
It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> but check out the slowness of that steering. So this is the original Acom servo in there. So next, I now have to solder on the motor wires. Check it out, this is a 15 triple Team Kinwald motor. Back in the day, this thing was ballistically quick. All oh, right, here we go. This is the moment of truth. Is it gonna work? Oh, it's going the wrong way. <laughs> oh guys, I just broke it off camera. I just picked it up and these two rear screws just snapped straight out. So I've got to replace these. So I've just taken this cover off here and I've remembered now, look, I've got the RW Racing gears in here. Because the stock, it used to come with these aluminium gears, but these used to make such a mess in there, and it used to turn all the grease in there to black. All screwed back on again. I actually found a couple of the original screws, and they fitted in there perfectly. Not really sure why. The way I had it, I had these brass screws here, and I had them going through this way, and then I had a nut holding it on on the other side. And I presume the reason I did it is because I didn't have any spare screws. You know, I was completely poor, I was completely broke. This thing took me like a couple of years to save up for. So I kind of had to kind of keep it running with just bits that I had kicking around. But anyway, it should now be ready for some action. Oh, and by the way, this is the spur gear that I used to run. Because on the original standard Tamiya spur gear, when you stripped it, you had to buy the whole entire gear set. But once you've done the RW conversion, all you could do, all you had to do was buy the actual RW ring gears. And so obviously the car came with a ring like this, but I remember back in the day, I kind of replaced it for like an ABS plastic one, and I can't find it. I don't know where the hell it is. It's probably at home in the box of the rest of my Manta Ray stuff. But I do have this Tomahawk rear wing, and although it's not exactly the same, it's better than having nothing on there. Oh, check it out guys. Imagine, as a 10 year old, how epic this thing would have been. Well, nowadays most of them prefer Xboxes, sad world. And the great thing about the RC hobby, it gets you out there, it gets you out there with friends, it gets you having fun, it gets you learning about tools, it gets you wrenching. But anyway, enough waffling, let's plug it in and give it a blast. <laughs> Guys, it's alive! <laughs> Subscribe! <laughs> oh guys, this is bringing back some memories. Gear the skipping. Oh, ho, ho. the steering is very slow, but guys, it's alive. Oh, that gearbox. All right, guys, I think we're going to leave it for this video. We're going to have to have a little look at the transmission. It is clicking. I don't know where from, but I think I'm going to have a look at it before we cause any more damage. I know some of you guys have said before you want to see it going over the jump, but no, this is like a bit of vintage nostalgia for me, and it's definitely not going to get destroyed. I just want to get it working again, and then having it sit on my shelf for happily ever after.
And here it is with a stock body shell on it. And this is bringing back some memories because back in the day when I first started using it, I did run it with this shell. Not this exact shell, it's the one that I pinched off for this one. But I did run it with a shell like this. And I remember when I bought these wheels here, I kind of ran it with this body first. So this is actually bringing back quite a lot of memories. And now here you can see the inside of the re-release manta ray. So putting this together, I didn't really notice much difference. It was, this is pretty close to the original. And the only thing really that stands out is that this one comes with an electronic speed controller. On this one, it had a servo here, one of the mechanical wiper style speed controllers. And then it had the, hit, the resistor up here. And that's where they used to poke out here. And I remember this sign here, caution hot, no touchy touchy. The only other difference I can notice on this kit is that on this one, it's got this little lump here on the drive shafts and these cups here are silver. Whereas on the original ones, there is no little mark on the drive shaft and the cups are black. So modification wise on this, as far as I can remember, uh, it's going back a few years. Obviously I've changed the wheels. I can't remember what company made these wheels. I've completely forgotten. I think they're probably Schumacher tires and maybe fast tracks rims i don't know i really can't remember then i've got carbon fiber shock towers that come off of a top force because these stock plastic ones these these used to break all the time if you kind of hid it underneath a car or something or, or jumped it and rolled it over these snapped off quite often and then i made these homemade adjustable top wishbones here so i can adjust the camber because when you look at the stock one they kind of solid links and then i replaced this sort of four wheel drive uh, center drive shaft, this is really thin and it used to bend really easily and then it'll start flapping around and making the right racket. So I've upgraded it here with this heavy duty one. I've changed the springs and I'm pretty sure these were off of some sort of a Schumacher car. The top four shock tower on the back here as well. The Brian Kinwald edition. Uh, 15 by 3 or 15 triple motor obviously the body and the wing and apart from that i think the rest of this thing is pretty stock uh, minus sort of mm, my little bodge upgrades whatever you want to call them so i kind of got out of this video what i wanted to achieve and it did bring back many memories from the screwdriver to this thing even moving uh, it takes me right back in the day i remember when i got this thing uh, I was sitting in my bedroom on the carpet, the green carpet, I can remember it now, putting this thing together with this very screwdriver. And I think today I've achieved what I've wanted to achieve and just to get this thing working again. So next, I want to sort out the issue with the gearbox grinding. I'm not really sure what's causing it. It's probably going to need another spur gear, maybe another motor mount. Uh, I'm going to try and fix that. And then also, once I found the mechanical speed controller and that resistor thing that sits on top, uh, I want to convert it back to that. But saying that though, when I did race it, I did have an ele electronic speed controller in there and it burnt out, so I threw it away. So maybe I'll leave it with this ESC in here, but um, I think I do need to dig out the Acom's Techni Plus, put the receiver back in there, and just kind of just bring it back to how it was when I used to race this back in the day. And you know what, guys? No materialistic thing has ever made me so excited as this. Um, you know, I remember back in the day when I first got this, I was so overwhelmed with excitement, I couldn't believe it was true. I mean, this was my absolute and utter dream. And it was more fun for me getting this than now it was getting this thing. But I'm hoping that once I get this thing here up and running, I can get some of those feelings back again. So here it sits on my shelf. So when I'm here in my shop, I can kind of see it sitting there and just kind of remind myself of, you know, where all this great hobby all started for me. So no idea when the next video is going to come out with this. There will be another video. No idea when, but for now, check out one of these other videos and I'll see you over there in a sec.